The Wolf of Wessex was my intro into historical fiction, if you will. So now that begs the question, where do we go from here? Hello everyone, thank you for watching, thank you for being here. If this is your first time here, like the video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel. Today, we are talking about 10, that's right, 10 historical fiction books and or series that I would like to read now that I have kind of dipped my toe into the water and have kind of decided this is something that I would really like to explore going forward, reading historical fiction. And I, I, I think historical fiction and fantasy sometimes get paired together. There's a like military aspect to it. There's a, yeah, you, you know, like sometimes they, they kind of walk some of the same lines, some of the same boundaries as fantasy. And sometimes like historical fiction even like takes a more fantastical approach and kind of uses real world events to tell a fantasy style story. And I kind of wanted to like in this list of 10 things I would like to read, kind of like have a have a mixture of those things. I don't think anything on this list really gets into into too much of like the the fantastical side of things, but I wanted to mix like military historical fiction with just like drama historical fiction, I guess is the word for it. Uh, even include things like westerns, and I even threw in kind of a horror book that is a historical fiction. Just keeping all of my options open, reading a wide array. And if you did not see the Wolf of Wessex review, that is up right now. Go check that out. And now, on to the list. So, let's get into it. The first book on this list, uh, again, this is in no like, particular order. This isn't like the order in which I'm going to read them in. It, it's literally just the order in which I wrote them down. Uh, so, the first book is called Dreaming the Eagle by Amanda Scott. Uh, this this is part of the Boudicca series. I believe there is four books total that tell the story of Boudicca, uh, in which we see Boudicca means bringer of victory. She is the last defender of the Celtic culture in Britain, the only woman who openly to lead her warriors into battle and stand successfully against the might of the Imperial Rome and triumph. So that is Boudicca. It is a, you know, very uh, like female centric story. Tells the, the story of this queen. I don't know if she's a queen, but uh, of this female warrior, like, fending off her territory. I don't know much about, like, this style, this period of history, so I'm looking forward to diving into that, reading some of these books. And if I like the first book, well, we will continue on with the series. The second book on the list is The, the Wolf Hall. Uh, this book is by Hilary Mantel. Uh, this is part of the Thomas Cromwell trilogy. I do believe the third book is coming out this year, or it is out. Uh, I have the first two, and I, I look forward to reading this. Uh, this is set in England in the 1520s. It is, uh, the king dies without a male heir. The country could be destroyed by civil war, and Henry VIII wants to annul his marriage of 20 years in Mary Anne Boleyn. The Pope and most of Europe opposes him. Into this impasse steps Thomas Cromwell, a holy, original man, a charmer, and a bully, both idealist and opportunist, astute in reading people and implacable. But Henry is volatile, one day tender, one day murderous. Cromwell helps him break the opposition, but will be the price of his triumph. And so that is Wolf Hall kind of telling that story about Henry VIII and Boleyn, that period of like. English history that is very well known, very well studied. Uh, probably you have heard about portions of it. And so I look forward to reading that trilogy. Not to mention, I, I've heard that it's just like wonderfully written and that Hilary Mantel has a phenomenal like, prose style. So I, I look forward to reading that. The next book is actually, it's a, it's a series of books by Ken Follet. Uh, it's the Pillars of the Earth series, which is a massive historical fiction series. Ken Follett is, is kind of one of the biggest contemporaries writing in historical fiction. So this is kind of one of his most well-known, one of his biggest series. So I would like to attempt to tackle this at some point, uh, the first book being uh, The Pillars of the Earth. And it is about 12th century feudal England uh, building a glorious big cathedral. And so this that is somewhat near the top of my list of things I would like to get to, mainly because of like, 
Ken Follett's stature and who he is in the historical fiction kind of realm. He, he he's up there with the Bernard Cornwells and people of uh, the Connie Goldens and stuff like that. People who will, will appear on this list of people that I need to get to. He's kind of one of those like grand masters of the genre. And he it's he is Stephen King to horror, right? Like he is just one of those renowned names that pops up over and over again on every list about historical fiction that you can read. And so I look forward to diving into some of that. This, this list, I tried to limit it to 10, but it could have easily been 20, 25, things like that. Like, there's just so much out there that seems worth diving into. These are just the 10 that I'm picking for now. The next book on the list is She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. Uh, honestly, this book I picked up by accident and after reading like what it's about, sounds pretty interesting so this book and the poppy war have a very like similar cover very similar kind of like structure to their spines and for some reason i don't really know what i was thinking i meant to go get the poppy war by rf kuang and i ended up getting uh she who became the sun and i i think that is just a complete misstep on my part and then i kind of read what it was about i do i really love like history from from that period the mongol stuff i always find fascinating again a lot of this is like oh that's a time period i would like to know more about so we'll read this maybe kind of parse what is fact what is fiction and i honestly i think that i will probably read this before i read poppy war and it's what i meant to buy so if that tells you anything that is she who became the sun a book that i would like to get to of all these books on the list, this is probably the one that I would like to get to first. The next book on the list is The Red Tent by Anita Diamond. And this is kind of uh, like a biblical retelling. Uh, I am the, the son of a minister, of a pastor. I went to church for a lot of my younger years. And so all of these like Bible stories, the big famous Bible stories, I know very well. And so every time there's kind of like a retelling of them or a, a telling of them that focuses on a minor character of that story, I'm always very interested. Uh, and this one is about Dina. You're reading through history and there's these people who are only like slightly mentioned or they only have like small roles to play in the bigger story, but like in their life, they had a very big role to play. And so kind of like shedding some light on people that aren't very well talked about or aren't very well known. I like those kinds of stories. And this one focuses on like the red tent. And if you're unaware, it's going to be a book about like womanhood, about what women of the time went through, about what that life would have been like for women, because the red tent is like a menstrual hut, basically, based on my understanding. And so it's going to be a book about like, a book full of women, like about women and what they went through in that time, telling the story of a very unknown character from biblical study. And I, I, <laughs> it's very niche. I understand. It does not seem like a book with widespread appeal, but I am very looking forward to reading it and checking it out. The next book on the list is the first book of a series. And as I mentioned the same with Ken Follet, uh, this is by Con Eagledon. Uh, it is Wolf of the Plains. It is the first book in the Conqueror series, which is about uh, Temujin, who's the son of a Khan, and it's kind of just about them conquering kind of like large parts of the world, that whole like Mongol dynasty, that Mongol empire. This is a historical fiction kind of based around that. And as I mentioned, he is, Con Eagledon is kind of one of the, the big names, the, the big three, if you will, for historical fiction. But in terms of like this kind of historical fiction, this military historical fiction that focuses on big battles, big historical fi figures, Con Gildan is one of the big names. And so I wanted to get going on one of like his big series. Conqueror is definitely one of them. He has, I think he has a couple other series that focus on different characters as well that I would really like to dive into. But I, I decided on this being the first one, and I am uh, very excited to dive into this one. I, I really, like I said, like when I said when we talked about She Who Became the Sun, I enjoy this sort of like Mongolian dynasty kind of sweeping through Asia, that that history going back there. I, I find that stuff like very interesting and very like fascinating. The next book on the list is Gates of Fire by Stephen Pressfield. This is a book that is a uh, 
a retelling of the the war, the, the 300 war, right, that everyone knows about. At Thermopylae, a rocky mountain pass in northern Greece, the feared and admired Spartan soldiers stood 300 strong. Theirs was a suicide mission to hold the pass against the invading millions of the mighty Persian army. This retells that story, and if you've seen the movie 300 from what I've read about this book, this is nothing like that. That movie takes, like, tons of liberties, and, you know, I all historical writers have to take liberties because there's literally things that we just we don't know we can't just leave those parts blank so we have to fill in the gaps but from what i gather that movie takes tons of historically inaccurate liberties that they had information for and this is a more of a a more realistic retelling of that story and it, i think it, it focuses on different soldiers at kind of taking you through their lives and is just about like this very big battle that happened in history where 300 soldiers stood against millions and so and that that like inherently is just an interesting story even if you already know the outcome i think diving into the different lives of the soldiers fighting for the spartans and like how what they were like before the war during the war and like leading up to this like kind of like makes it worth it you get to go on this emotional journey with characters even if you kind of already know the outcome right and that can be said of a lot of historical fiction where yes like if if you wanted to just know the historical events that took place like you don't have to read the cicero trilogy like you can just go read the wikipedia page for cicero and like know the historical events that took place but that's like what historical fiction is doing and like what i think it, it does very well is it provides like a context for these characters and it, it treats them as like real people not just historical figures that you read about in textbooks but tries to humanize them give them emotions gives you reasons to care about them like beyond what is in a textbook and can kind of like even if it's not always wholly accurate i think a lot of writers in good amounts of research can really bring some of these historical characters to life to kind of get a good sense of who they might have been, or at least that's what good historical fiction does, is sort of give you a sense of who these characters might have been. So even if you know the outcome that Alexander the Great's empire falls, even if you know the outcome of Genghis Khan, or if you know the outcome of some of these other dynasties, or of the Battle of 300, like, getting to humanize some of the soldiers that took place in the battle is kind of like what makes it worth reading. So that's why I look forward to checking out Gates of Fire by Stephen Pressfield. The next book on the list is part of a series, and I guess depending on how this book goes, depends on if I will know, if I will like read through the rest of it, and that is James Clavell's Shogun. Uh, as you, this, is a, this is a pretty thick book, and I think all the books in the series are also fairly thick. Small pages, small writing. And Shogun is kind of a last samurai kind of story. It tells the story of John Blackthorn, who gets lost at sea, and he awakens in a place that few Europeans know of and even fewer have seen, Nippon, and he's thrust into the closed society that is 17th century Japan. So it, it tells a very similar narrative that we've seen probably dozens of times. Foreigner ends up in a foreign land, ends up like really taking to and adopting those customs and then has to decide well do i want to stay here or do i want to return to the life i had before and i i know this is part of a series and i don't really know much about the other books and i don't know like where they kind of go from here uh, i know the next book in the series is called taipan uh yeah it's part of the asian saga by james clavell oh wow there's a five six six books in the series so yeah i we we shall see if i end up continuing with this but i would at least like to read this one i think those kinds of stories are interesting we see them a lot in like westerns where you know the white cowboy gets taken by a native tribe an indigenous tribe and then they live amongst them and they start to see like these are not the villains i thought they were i end up adopting a lot of these customs and now they're torn between helping save this crowd from other white people or going back to the life that they knew. I always find that story kind of interesting. Yes, some of it is very cliched of to where it's going, but I, I like large portions of those stories and I kind of like just that main setup. So I look forward to checking out Shogun. Uh, I, who knows when I will get to this is a thousand page book. 
at least in this edition, 1,100 pages. 1,152 pages in Shogun, so... Probably not anytime soon, but eventually I will get there. The next book on the list is, I suppose, a horror novel of sorts. And you know me, I love horror, I love horror fiction. So I was trying when making this list to find like a place where horror kind of took on historical fiction. And this is the big one that I could find, and that is The Hunger by Almakatsu, which is kind of a retelling of uh, the Donner Party, which if you're unfamiliar, the Donner Party was traveling west and they end up getting like lost or something happens and they basically have to resort to cannibalism. And so you can see how that kind of lends its hand towards horror. And I just, I really want to see how historical fiction is tackled in a more horror setting. And I, I just... I, I really think this is an untapped genre here that could be bountiful, that could be the home of several great, great books where you take these sort of like events that have happened and then you just give them a horror twist. Like, I think this story, this the Donner Party was going to cannibalism. There's gotta be tons of stories like that that exist out there. Maybe some that are not as well known, but even still, even with well-known events, I think you could twist them into a horror story. So that is kind of what I am most looking forward to with this book, is to see how historical fiction takes a more horrific turn. And so I, I, I'm very interested to check this one out. Besides She Who Became the Sun, this is at the very, near the very top of my list to check out. And lastly, um, this this is kind of a big one, Westerns. I don't really know. A lot of people seem to count Westerns. I'm still kind of torn because I think a lot of Westerns have no real basis like in historical events. Uh, so that's why this, this is a two-parter. I, I really want to read the Lonesome Dove books. I don't think there's any real basis in reality for the Lonesome Dove books, but Westerns in general, I kind of would like to get a little bit more into, kind of see what that's all about. But lastly, as I mentioned, there's an author here who is missing. The the historical f fiction author, right? The one that like everyone has read, the one that everybody recommends, and that is Bernard Cornwell. There are tons of Bernard Cornwell books that I own, that I would like to read. Uh, and I, what I love about him is that he goes through very different genres. It's not always the same. Like he has his, uh, this is the, the first trilogy of his that I will probably read, which is uh, the Grail Quest trilogy, which is about like the Crusades and the Holy Grail, exactly what it sounds like. I would love to read that. Obviously, he has his Saxon Chronicle books that I would love to read. Uh, he has his Sharp series that takes place during, like, somewhere in like, the Civil War era that I would love to read. Burr Cornwell is just a master of the genre. And so no real list talking about historical fiction uh, is really complete without at least mentioning him. And so that's why I kind of, I've saved him for last. Because he just, I don't have just one that I would like to read. I want to read it all. I want to read everything he's got to offer. And so, Burr Cornwell... 100% an author I need to get to, that I need to make time for. Like I said, I probably will start with the Grail Quest trilogy and maybe just go from there. I don't, we'll, we'll see. Um, but I rattled off a lot of historical fiction books. 10, all, almost all of which are part of series that I need to get to. That's tons, tons that I cannot wait to read, to dive into. Let us know down in the comments some historical fiction books that you would like to read, that I should be reading, that I missed on this list. Just if you, we'll continue the conversation there. That is all I have for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Like the video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. And until next time, thank you for watching. Keep reading good books.